Hey, what's up guys? Super here yet again. Today I'm checking out another fat electrician video that I've seen recommended in the comments. It is America's Secret Underground Cheese Bunkers. The title alone has me curious. <laughs> So let's see what this is all about. This has almost nothing to do with the US military, but it's so ridiculous I can't not talk about it. Today we're talking about America's strategic cheese reserve. Yeah, if you didn't know, the United States currently has over 500 underground cave warehouses spanning across 35 different states, the largest of which is underneath Springfield, Missouri, where America, as of August 2022, currently hoards one and a half billion pounds of cheese. What? And just for the record, I realize I'm uploading this video very close to April Fool's Day. This is not an April Fool's joke. I am 100% serious. El Dorado is real, and Uncle Sam made it out of cheese. Look, <laughs> El Dorado, the city of gold. And I know what you're thinking. Right now, you're like, wow, that's a cool little factoid. I can't wait to share that with my buddy at the bar one day. But no, this is going to infect your thoughts for the rest of your life. You're never going to see the world through the same lens ever again. I mean, for example, let's just say you're at home watching The Walking Dead. You're going to come to the realization there'd be way more fucking cheese in the apocalypse than that, okay? You're never going to be able to watch Mad Max again without thinking about cheese. You have to come to the terrifying realization that you live in a world where there is a greater than 0% chance that one of these underground cheese caves gets mistaken for a government facility and gets nuked in World War III and we're gonna have to deal with a radioactive tsunami wave of nacho cheese. And this is real life. So I asked myself one question, how on earth did America get to this point? Because I know it didn't happen overnight. And what I found was the craziest real world example of a butterfly effect that I have ever seen. And believe it or not, it all actually ties back in with last week's video of the ice cream ships of World War II. If you missed that, the super abbreviated version, basically the US government banned alcohol during prohibition in the 1920s. Because of that, all the bars in America turned themselves into ice cream parlors to stay in business. Ice cream stepped up to fill the social void left by alcohol. If so facto, there was like two generations of Americans that treated ice cream like it was alcohol, socially speaking. As I'm sure you can imagine, this would drive up dairy consumption. Combine that with the fact that the 30s and 40s is when refrigeration would become readily accessible, meant that for the first time in human history, there was such a demand for dairy products that farmers could exclusively become dairy farmers, meaning that this would be the birth of the entire dairy industry. And honestly, it worked out great right up until it didn't in 1949. 1949, four years after World War II, the American military is downsized. There's not an entire horde of young men eating 10,000 calories a day. And America's not exporting anywhere near as much food to other countries for war relief meant that there was a decrease in dairy consumption or a dip in the dairy market. As this became a bigger and bigger problem, the government had to step in because they weren't about to let the entire dairy industry implode because, I mean, let's face it, that would be utter catastrophe. So the <laughs> USDA utter stepped in and said, hey, you know what? We're going to buy all the excess milk. Okay, pause. Thought experiment. You're a dairy farmer. You make all of your money by selling milk. And then suddenly, a couple years back, motherfuckers quit drinking milk, aka you made less money. Now the government has come out of left field and said, hey, we're going to buy all of the milk. What do you do? You make, make a more lot fucking of milk. milk. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. So just to be clear, there was already too much milk. Now there's definitely gonna be too much milk. So naturally, all the milk starts flowing in. The government has absolutely no idea what to do with it, so they turn it into cheese. That way it doesn't expire. That part makes sense, but now what do you do with all the cheese? They have no clue, so they just throw it underneath a mountain, ignore it, and hope the problem goes away. But it doesn't go away because every single presidential administration through the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, they all continue to buy up excess milk to prop up the dairy industry, turn it into cheese, and stash it away in these caves. It literally turns into a giant political game of kick the can down the road because nobody wants to be the president that crashes the global economy by not buying enough milk while sitting on top of a mountain of cheese, which, understandable, I don't want to be that guy either. Then, fast forward to 1980, Ronald Reagan, aka the small government guy, gets elected, finds out that the US government is sitting on top of 500 million pounds of cheese and spending a million dollars a day to refrigerate and store it and he looks at this whole issue like a beaver a million dollars a day to refrigerate cheese the commenter that said this video would make me rethink a lot of things uh i'm paraphrasing there but <laughs> Oh my god, you were not kidding. Million dollars a day to refrigerate and store it, and he looks at this whole issue like a beaver looks at running water. Absolutely fucking not. We can't have it. So his administration goes about figuring out the cheapest way to solve this cheese problem. Obviously, 
we're gonna throw it all in the ocean. However, having at least the foresight to understand that that would cause political backlash, he wanted to see how the public would receive it, so someone from his administration shows up to a White House press conference with a five pound block of moldy cheese and is like, hey, we got 500 million pounds of this shit, how would you guys feel if we threw it in the ocean? It'll be fun, we'll save money on cheese, we're gonna find out if blue whales are lactose intolerant. <laughs> it's gonna be a great science experiment. The public did not go for it. They kind of felt like, hey, I've paid taxes for the last 40 years. You've turned those taxes into cheese. I would at least like the cheese. So then the Reagan administration took the 55 gallon drums of cheese, cut it up into five pound blocks, packaged it, and spent the remainder of his administration. This is where government cheese comes from. If you know, you know. ...funneling 300 million pounds of crack, I mean cheese, into impoverished and elderly homes. And this is where we get the saying, government cheese from. I could write these videos. <laughs> Damn, that makes sense. Yeah, my mind's a little blown right now, huh? You're gonna end up eating a steady diet of government cheese and living in a van down by the river. The US government would then continue to give out government cheese until the 1990s when they seemingly ran out because as of today, all 1.5 billion pounds of underground secret cheese in America is privately owned by corporations like Kraft and Velveeta. And this is the part where I wanted to end the video on a happy note of the government made a mistake, they fixed a mistake over 50 years, happy ending, hooray. However, it didn't really make sense because something happened in the 1990s where the government was able to stop buying the excess milk. What happened? And that's when it hit me. It was absolutely the Got Milk ad campaign, the biggest, most iconic ad campaign of all time. I mean, every cafeteria and every school in America had a bunch of posters of famous athletes with milk mustaches saying, got milk, drink your milk. I vividly remember commercials as a child telling me that if I didn't drink enough milk, my arms would literally fall off my body. Well, Mr. Miller told me he never drinks milk. Look at him. No, oh, that's not good. Got milk. Surely this is what inspired an entire generation of Americans to eat and drink more dairy products, right? I mean, yeah, probably, but looking back on it now as an adult, doesn't it seem just a little bit weird that it wasn't a particular company putting on all these ads? Like, if there wasn't one company profiting from selling all this milk, where was all the money coming from? I mean, it almost seems like the government launched a giant psychological operation, I mean, ad campaign, just so that they could offload milk so they wouldn't have to keep contributing to their mountain of cheese. Well, I'm... I'm going to take this off now because that's that's legit exactly what happened. Uh, in 1995, the U.S. government created a nonprofit organization known as Dairy Management Incorporated. I've never thought about that. But yeah, those Got Milk commercials were ridiculous. They were everywhere and they weren't tied to some company. It wasn't like this brand milk company was putting them out. Yeah. Holy shit. And their entire job was to get the American people to eat and drink more dairy products. Literally a cabal of individuals plotting behind the scenes to get people to eat more cheese. It's the cheesiest conspiracy <laughs> of all time. And I'm not even kidding. Anything that has ever been sold or marketed that involved way too much cheese on it, this company is behind. Okay. They're the reason that Taco Bell started selling steak quesadillas. They were behind the got milk ad campaign. In 2002, when Pizza Hut had the Summer of Cheese event where they put way too much cheese on all their pizzas, this is who was behind it. In 2010, when Domino's almost went out of business, they gave Domino's $12 million to stay in business and then gave them a bunch of cheese so that they could put extra cheese on all of their pizzas, and that was their entire proposition for staying in business. Hey, our pizzas have more cheese on them now, so they're good. It is absolutely insane. So I did it. I found the world's cheesiest conspiracy, but then I found leaked internal documents from DMI, and they are the funniest fucking thing I have ever read in my entire life. Let me go ahead and read one for you now. It's a letter from Pizza Hut to DMI regarding a meeting they recently had, July 6, 1999. Dear Gritta, we wanted to express our thanks once again for a wonderful meeting last week. We appreciate your team taking the time to share some very valuable information and creativity during our brainstorming session. Everyone is very excited about the presentation you gave regarding DMI's available resources and cheese industry insights. 
We look forward to working together to develop many cheese ideas we've discussed. We believe this is going to be a valuable partnership for both Pizza Hut and DMI. Let's sell more pizza and more cheese! Exclamation point. Thank you again for coming to Dallas. We look forward to talking to you soon about Lord our partnership of the cheese, opportunities. Lord of the Cheese, Lady of the Cheese. We will call you next week to discuss the next steps. Sincerely, Derek, Lord of the Cheese, and Liskrin, <laughs> Lady of the Cheese. Even they know that this is a fucking joke. Why is this such a joke? Well, because Derek Dairy Management Incorporated, while it is a non-profit, they don't actually have to raise money for themselves like most non-profits do because they're also a government checkoff program, which means every dairy farmer in America is legally required, whether they want to or not, to send this company money so that they can advertise on their behalf. And their annual budget is like $140 million a year Jeez. with their CEO and top level executives all making right around a million dollars per year. Okay, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you there is a group of people in America getting paid a million dollars to convince Americans that cheese is awesome. Okay, that's like trying to fucking explain to Stevie Wonder what nothing looks like and getting paid a million dollars for it. He already <laughs> fucking knows that, okay? It makes no goddamn sense. Cheese is so fucking good that it is the one thing on earth that if you are allergic to it, we're not gonna say you have a cheese allergy. No, you're lactose intolerant. We're not gonna say you're allergic because we all know you're gonna eat that shit anyways. I'm lactose intolerant. I live on cheese and ice cream, specifically Ben and Jerry's. It's a problem for future me. If I eat some cheese or some ice cream, I just gotta deal with it. I'm not not eating it. Because the consequences are worth it. Am I upset right now? A little bit. Is it because I'm jealous? Uh-huh. It's basically selling ass candles to dogs and getting paid a million dollars for it. <laughs> it is the most ridiculously easy job on the planet and I'm so mad that it's not mine. Anyways, I guess if you made it this far in the Unhinged TED Talk, in conclusion, uh, the US government banned alcohol in the 1920s. It set forth a ripple effect through time and now some dude in 2023 has my dream job of making a million dollars a year to convince people of some shit they already knew and the u.s has one and a half billion pounds of cheese hidden in an underground cave network fucking the more you know i guess <laughs> thanks for watching best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at fatelectrician.com quack bang out i'm gonna go eat some fucking cheese <laughs>